Working with piecewise functions, in the last video, I introduced them to you, showed you what they look like, and gave you an example of where we see them outside of math class, a real-life example. I started by interpreting a simple piecewise function, meaning if we had to evaluate it at a certain point, we would know how to do that. We figure out which interval it fits into first, and then we substitute it into that corresponding piece. So we now know how to interpret piecewise functions. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how to graph piecewise functions. So I'm taking that exact same example that we dealt with in the last video, um, which we see here, and we want to figure out how to graph it. Just note that this works similarly to graphing a typical function. If we have ordered pairs, then we can graph those ordered pairs on our graph. So what we did in the last video, what I have here, is basically five different ordered pairs on my graph. Now what I can do is I can plot those points first and then figure out how our graph fits in with it. But I'm gonna do the graph first and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to double check it using these ordered pairs. Um, in further examples, if you feel more comfortable with plotting the points first, I encourage you to do so. Um, I just want to show you how to graph it without knowing any ordered pairs to start out with. So we're going to graph this example here. I'm going to take it piece by piece. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just focus on this right here. I'm not going to look at this interval or any of this second piece at this time. I'm only focusing on x plus 2. So basically what we want to graph is y equals x plus 2. Now we should know how to graph this. We should be able to pick out what degree it is. My highest exponent in this equation isn't even visible. So we know that this is a degree 1 equation. And we know degree one equations produce us lines. So we can compare this up with our linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where b corresponds to our y-intercept and our m corresponds to our slope. So that's how I'm going to graph this x plus two. Let me graph this one in blue. So my first piece I'm going to graph in blue to help you kind of separate the two pieces. So my y-intercept is 2, so I plot an ordered pair at 0, 2, and my slope is 1, or if you want to write it as 1 over 1, that helps you graph it better. So I start with my y-intercept, and then I graph my slope, up 1 over 1, and I keep doing that as many times as I need in the right direction, or down 1, left 1, and I keep doing that as many times as I need in my left direction. So I have all these points here. So if I connect all these points here, that gives me the graph of y equals x plus 2. So this is this straight line. Now what I want to come back and do is I want to actually only interpret this graph on the interval that is applicable to this. So I want to interpret this graph only when x is less than negative 1. So I look at my x values, I figure out where x is equal to negative 1 at, and this is this right here. Well, if I want x is less than negative 1, that means I only want it smaller than negative 1. So I only want the left-hand version of this graph separated by where x is negative 1 at. So that means I don't want anything to the right of this blue line here. So basically, I need to come back and I need to get rid of everything to the right of this blue line. So this gives me the graph of y equals x plus 2, but only when x is less than negative 1. Okay, now I'm going to graph my second piece, and let me graph it in green. So my second piece of 3 minus x, I'm going to graph it in green green. Now, I should also know how to graph this. This is also a degree 1 or a linear equation. So if I rewrite this in my typical order, negative x plus 3, I can figure out what my y-intercept is, and I can figure out what my slope is. My b value is 3, so I'm going to plot my y-intercept at 3. 
and my slope is negative 1, or I can write it as negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1, write 1 as many times as I need to to come up with the graph of this line. And if you want to do the other direction as well, that makes it up 1, left 1. So if I connect all of these points here, that gives me the graph of the line y equals 3 minus x. But now I need to interpret it on its appropriate interval. I only want this when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, I figure out where negative 1 is, and that is this place right here. That's my x value of negative 1. I want the greater than version of it. That means I only want this line to the right. So I need to get rid of everything to the left of this line here. So that is the equation of y equals 3 minus x when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So these arrows, these highlighted arrows that I have drawn up here, that's just to separate the graph by where my intervals are defined. There's one extra thing that I need to do here. I need to figure out what's actually happening at my separation piece. And that's where this greater than or equal to piece separates from just this less than piece. If it's equal to, then that means we actually have a point on that marking. So notice that applies to my second piece or my green piece. I have the greater than or equal to. That means I actually have a point on that. So that means I actually have a point right here when x is equal to negative 1. So the other piece, my blue region, x is less than negative 1, that means I do not have a point right here. Okay. If I had a point there, that would violate my vertical line test, and that would tell me that this is not a function. So I cannot draw an actual point there, so what we do instead is we draw an open circle. So I have an open circle right here because I did not have the or equal to bar right there. So that means that it's defined at negative 1 on my green graph, but not defined at negative 1 on my blue graph. So I have now drawn my official graph. So let me erase these separator marks because I don't actually need them. Those are not actually parts of the graph. And let me draw this red circle instead of in red. Let me draw it in blue so you know that it's part of the blue graph. So a closed circle on the green and an open circle on the blue. All right, I told you if I knew ordered pairs that they should actually show up on the graph. So let's do this. Let's go back to where we interpreted it in the last video. And we're going to plot those points here. And we're going to prove that those are actually part of the graph. So let's start with part A. Notice we came up with the ordered pair negative 5, negative 3. So that point should show up on our graph. Also notice that we came up with it by using the first piece of our piecewise function. So I graph that in blue, so that should show up on our blue piece. So my point, negative 5, negative 3, does show up on our graph here. And I can do this with all of them. So my second ordered pair I have is 0, 3, and I found that by using my second piece. So the ordered pair 0, 3 shows up on my second piece. My third, 5, negative 2, came from my second piece. So 5, negative 2 shows up on my second piece. My fourth, negative 9, negative 7, I found by plugging it into my first piece. So my graph there, negative 9, negative 7, shows up on my first piece. And you can see how this works. My last point, negative 1, 4, I plugged into the second part of my graph because that's where the or equal to was. So my negative 1, 4 shows up on the second part of my graph as a filled in point because that's where my or equal to was. So it should show up here and never show up as the open circle point right there. 
So we have just confirmed all of these points are, in fact, on the R graph. Now, again, I could have plotted these ordered pairs first and then come up with my graph second, but I decided to use them as a double-check feature rather than an initial feature. In the next video, I will come back and show you how to graph this example by using your graphing calculator.